No money, no family, 16 in the middle of Miami is a popular lyric from one of Iggy Azalea's biggest hits, which I don't think most listeners have even considered the validity or origin story of the lyric. Partially because Iggy Azalea is not the rapper you look to for lyrics. Although Iggy Azalea quickly faded into irrelevancy due to her grotesque cultural cosplay and insensitivity, as well as a ton of feuds and a lack of good music, when she was the hottest singer in the industry, there was an air of controversy and mystery surrounding her, from allegations of being an industry plant to a fake. If anything, a song like Work adds more questions to the controversy. How did a 16-year-old immigrant with absolutely no family or money move to an entirely different continent and rise to the top of the music industry for a moment in the sun? It's an intriguing narrative, maybe even inspiring if you take it at face value, but is any of it actually true? According to articles and accounts from Iggy herself, her mom let her drop out of high school and work with her cleaning hotels. She left her small town in Australia at the age of 16, landing in Miami with no family. Allegedly, this came about after she lied to her parents and told them that she was going on a vacation to Miami with a friend, but really she was just going by herself. And after she landed, she decided that she wanted to stay there. She claimed to have gotten an apartment at the age of 16. I got a little apartment with all the money I had been saving from working in Australia. I didn't have shit to spend my money on as a kid since I lived in a town that had nothing, so I had money saved. She allegedly resided in America on the terms of a visa waiver and had to travel to Australia every three months to renew it. And the big question is, how would a 16 year old who claims to come from humble beginnings afford to travel to a different continent on the opposite side of the world every three months? Iggy also claimed that she was staying in hotels prior to getting an apartment. But in most scenarios in the States, 16 year olds are not able to rent hotel rooms. She did admit that she took part in criminal activity, although she's adamant that it was not drugs or anything. Instead, it was supposedly gift card scams. So it's not clear what truly took place, whether sinister or innocent. It's possible that some of her pre-fame story is fabricated to either protect or add credence to her story. In 2017, Jezebel did an expose on Iggy's rise to fame that brought in a lot of producers, writers, and mentors at the helm of her ascension to fame, which gave a more unrefined in-look on what really happened as she was beginning to turn famous. Miami was a dead-end street for Iggy. It was really Houston where she would transform her artistry. Iggy sucked as a rapper, and she knew it, and so did many of her collaborators. People such as Mr. Lee and Morris Williams were instrumental in helping Iggy become a better rapper than what she was. Famed writer and producer Polo the Don also helped mentor Iggy. He was drawn to her look, claiming that she looked like a star and exotic. He saw her as a successor to Fergie, but Iggy pushed back and wanted to exclusively do hip hop music. Apparently she ran into that problem a lot and was warned that no one would take her seriously if she tried to approach rapping as if she were from the hood. She even attempted to be a pop star before a rapper. In 2014, an electro pop song she did resurfaced titled Nothing Like Me, which has been described as a poor imitation of Britney Spears' work. It's clear at least that Iggy tried everything she could musically to get famous, and she eventually landed on her medium, which was somewhere in the middle between pop and rap, ultimately seeping into a lane Nicki Minaj helped pave the way for. It isn't like when you meet an artist and they're a few songs deep, it's like, oh no, you really have to learn how to rap, says a former colleague of Iggy's who asked to remain anonymous during the Jezebel interview. Literally everybody told her she would never be a rapper, so it became something to prove in a way that to me was very detrimental. She wanted people to be like, yes, Iggy the MC. Eventually T.I. would endorse Iggy, offering her at least a small taste of the world of hip-hop credibility she never had access to beforehand. He often defended her and for a long time served as an apologist for her. The impact of T.I. in Southern hip-hop is apparent on Iggy's debut album, from her fake accent to the flows and attitude to the sonic palette. Although Iggy clearly had a love for hip hop, it takes more than loving and listening to a genre to become a respected rapper that everyone takes seriously. But obviously it was a facade that was easily dismantled and one that people were eager to dismantle. Iggy was not naturally gifted. She and her producers knew it, and more than anything, she was marketable. 
and worked consistently to land in the moment that would afford her a lot of success. And while we may never know every little detail about her mysterious rise, it's surely a fascinating one, especially considering how hard it all came crumbling down. And I get the sense that everything wasn't as cut and dry as portrayed in the media, meaning there's a possibility something more was going on that we may or may never know.